And a good morning to you. It's straight up 731. I'm Scott Adkins. So glad that you stopped by Way Through Sunrise today. A lot happened overnight. A plane crash in Jennings County. We'll get to that in just a moment. But first, Brian Good is tracking some severe weather later tonight. But for now, a break in all the action. Good morning, Brian. Hey, good morning, Scott. Uh, yeah, fairly quiet here this morning. The only concern we're going to have is going to be a little bit of uh, some freezing drizzle and freezing fog out there in a few spots. So be careful. A little bit of scraping you may have to do there this morning on the windshields, so certainly on the uh, roadways as well. A little bit of light glaze on those untreated roads. Otherwise, things are going to improve today. We're going to have major changes within the next 24 hours. Right now, i got to get through this fog here this morning. Temperatures, yeah, on the cold side, right around that freezing mark here in the city. 32, so that's the reason why we're worried about that glaze that could form out there for the next uh, few hours. We are going to warm things up, though. In fact, we'll be in the 50s. This afternoon, with areas of drizzle possible, will rise to near 60, though, for a low tonight, which will end up being our high, actually, and then we'll have to watch out for those storms. Now, everyone's been talking about this. Are we going to see tornadoes? Are we going to see straight-line winds? When are they going to arrive? We're going to time it out for you and show you the latest maps and thinking here on how this is going to play out tonight for Kentuckiana. All that and more coming up here in just a few moments, Scott. And, of course, the Way 3 weather team will be tracking all night long. To our top story now, two are dead after a plane crashed into a field in southern Indiana. We brought you this story as breaking news last night at 11 o'clock. It happened in Jennings County just after 9 last night. Wave 3's David Williams was on the scene shortly after it happened. We are in North Vernon, Indiana, in the 3000 block of East County Road 600 South, about nine and a half miles northwest of the Madison Airport. Indiana State Police is saying that two people are dead in a Jennings County plane crash. It happened at approximately 8.41 p.m. Saturday night. Jennings County Dispatch received a 911 call of a plane crash south of County Road 600 South in Jennings County. Officers responded to the scene and found a small Cessna single-engine plane out in a field several hundred yards from the roadway. Officers are reporting, again, two people dead, one man and one woman. Federal aviation officials have been notified. Working for you in Jennings County, David Williams, Wave 3 News. And this is a developing story. Stay with Way 3 on air, online, and on your mobile for continuing updates. New this morning, a fire engulfs the attic of an East Louisville home. It happened just after 1 this morning on Dunbarton Wind, just off Newburg Road. Three people living there were able to escape thanks to working smoke detectors. Three occupants lived in the home. They were home at the time of the fire. They had been using the fireplace. They said they heard, uh, when they went to bed, they said they heard cracking and popping and all. So they got up, saw the smoke, they all exited the uh, dwelling. Firefighters have dispatched an arson team to investigate the cause of the fire. A woman is taken to the hospital after police say she was hit by a Metro Police cruiser in Old Louisville Saturday. Police say the woman was crossing 1st Street when an officer making a left onto Ormsby hit her while she was in the crosswalk. She was taken to University Hospital with leg and face injuries. Police say her injuries are not life-threatening. The LMPD traffic unit is investigating, but say it does not appear the pedestrian did anything wrong. More than 600 refugees from Burma are in Louisville, beginning a new life after some say they were run out of their country, many of them for being Christians. Senator Mitch McConnell spent Saturday morning with them after his recent trip to the country. A translator relays the message Senator Mitch McConnell delivers to an attentive crowd of mostly refugees from Burma. He wants to see us as uh, Burmese people uh, in, in this city, Louisville. So I'm very pleased. They've escaped their homeland, run out of their villages. Many of them are finding solace in Louisville. Sympathize with their situation. The Kentucky U.S. Senate Minority Leader just returned from their home country, touring the nation plagued with problems. It's a country in Southeast Asia, now known as Myanmar. For years, military rule persecuted some of the ethnic groups. But a newly elected government is showing signs of progress. I do think there have been some important uh, steps in the right direction. 
long way to go. Hundreds live in Louisville working with green cards, and McConnell wanted them to know he's paying attention to the work in progress in Burma. It's not easy being a refugee. You know, you're in a strange country and you don't speak the language and you're trying to adapt and you're consumed with concern about your relatives who are in these refugee camps. So he dropped by the Crescent Hill Baptist Church, where many of them worship, to let them know he's paying attention to developments in their native country. And here they have a, a safe and free life, but they don't speak the language and the culture is strange. So I thought it would be an opportunity for them to have some connection with somebody who's just been where they came from. And now the latest from Penn State. People are gathering at the statue of Joe Paterno on the campus of Penn State University to honor the former head football coach. Paterno remains hospitalized, and his family says his condition has become serious. Gary Sanderson reports. As some lit candles and placed them at the base of the Paterno statue, the volunteers quickly shoveled the area. Brian Cromhauer was the first on hand here, arriving just after 6.30. It was peaceful, you know. I mean, it's peace, peaceful now, but just to be able to reflect with Joe Pop by myself it was a meditating experience. Others gathered saying they just wanted to be here. Not all were students. Couldn't sit at home. Had to, had to just be here. It's, uh, you know, he was uh, first Penn State football game, he was the head coach. It's a very emotional night. A lot of talk about Paterno and the Penn State Board of Trustees who decided he could no longer coach in any lines. Many here hoping Paterno's legacy, built over 61 years, is not overshadowed by the Jerry Sandusky scandal. Throughout the night, more and more people coming to share prayers and thoughts. I think it's just going to grow as the night goes on. and uh, uh, It's just an honor to him. He, he, he made Penn State, and, and I'm an alum. And it's, uh, he, he's, he's the guy that I always, when you talk Penn State, you always said Joe Paterno. And now a wrap of your sports. The Cardinals picked up a much-needed win in Pittsburgh last night. Kyle Keurig scored 21 points in his return from an ankle injury to lead number 23 Louisville to a 73-62 victory over the struggling Panthers. Jane Behannon added a career high of 19 points for the Cards, who took control during an 11-2 run midway through the second half to send the Panthers to their eighth straight loss. Ashton Gibbs and Lamar Patterson led Pitt with 14 points each, but the defending Big East champions remain the only winless team in conference play. The eighth straight loss marks the program's longest losing streak in more than a decade. And the Wildcats for an action last night at Rupp Arena. Of course, Way 3 was there. Darius Miller hit four free throws in the final minute, and freshman Marquise Teague and Anthony Davis each added two more as the second-ranked Cats held on to beat Alabama 77-71. to Kentucky led the entire second half. But Alabama's Trevor Relaford scored all 17 of his points in the second half to keep the Crimson Tide close until the very end. Terrence Jones made Kentucky's final f with the 6 minutes and 57 seconds left, but the Wildcats hit 23 of 29 second half free throw attempts, including all eight in the final minute in a game that featured 45 fouls. Lauren Lamb had 14 points and freshman Michael Kidd Gilchrist added 13 for the Wildcats. More news now. The federal government is now stepping up efforts to track down parents who are behind in child support payments and seem determined to avoid paying, even if it means harming their own children. NBC's Tom Costello is in Washington. 7 a.m. in Arlington, Virginia. Sheriff's office. And with a stack of warrants, sheriff's deputies are hunting for deadbeat parents. He doesn't live here. It's a weekly, even daily game of cat and mouse where dads and moms who are behind in child support by hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars have become very good at slipping away. How often do you knock on a door like this and nobody's home? Probably about 90% of the time that we go time. knock on a door and there's no answer or the person that we're looking for does not live there. But because it's a civil warrant, if a parent moves across state lines, local police can't go after them. But if they owe more than $5,000 in cross state lines, it becomes a felony. That's where the feds get involved. 
Gerald Roy is the HHS Deputy Inspector General. You are talking about uh, a willful intent to avoid uh, paying for your children, for their livelihood, for providing the basics that they so deserve. Now, federal investigators are naming names with a new fugitive website aimed at tracking down the most egregious cases. At the top of the list, Robert Sand, who owes more than a million dollars in child support. Where do you believe Mr. Sand is right now? We believe Robert is hiding out in Thailand. And he knows he's wanted? Uh, he knows he's wanted. Some of the biggest cases involve pro athletes, including former NBA player Tyrone Nesby, who pleaded guilty to failure to pay child support and is now paying nearly a million dollars. You don't ride a bike with flip-flops. In Des Moines, Arlene Shepard and her seven Cute. kids are on their own. Glenn Shepard has been on the run since 2003. He owes more than $160,000 in child support, while Arlene and the kids get by on minimum wage. I would hope he could look at them and apologize. I don't think that anything can take it away, the pain, the anger, the hurt, sadness. But I would hope he would be able to apologize to him. Just after Christmas, police caught up with Glenn Shepard in Arizona. He's declined to talk to us. And since 2006, the feds have found more than 500 deadbeat parents, recovering more than $33 million in child support. In this county alone in Northern Virginia, they have 175 outstanding child support warrants, some of them dating back to 1997. Whether you can't stand your ex, you should care about the children that you brought into this world and make sure that they're protected and that they're okay. Still ahead on Way 3 Sunrise, before you post another pic to Facebook or Twitter, yeah, you'll want to see this next story, how you can protect yourself from snapshot stalkers. And it's a foggy start to the day so far. Some of that actually freezing on contact, but a different story completely for tonight. I'll explain after the break.